everyone! Welcome to the circus! Wait, this, this is a math channel. This isn't a circus, but we can still have fun. Today, in Mr. Douglas's math land, we are going to look at the Cartesian plane, also known as the coordinate plane. Are you ready to get your coordinates on? Here we go. So who's a big fan of circuses? I always thought it was pretty cool to see the jugglers and the people who are like swallowing flaming swords and making tigers jump through hoops. Pretty crazy. Speaking of crazy, today we are talking about, ah, I don't like that color. Let's go this color. Today we're talking about the coordinate plane. Now you did hear me also talk about the other thing it's called, it's the Cartesian plane. Uh, same sort of thing. But basically, we're talking about uh, graphs. And you may have seen these before. You have a graph like this, and then basically what you end up getting is a couple of these lines. We call this the x-axis. And we call this, way up here, the y-axis. And you'll notice that on most of these kinds of things, you they're all divided kind of nice and evenly up and down, and you get a huge grid like that. Well, there's some other things that we need to know about this. Is the the point right in the middle? We call that the origin, and then we need to start labeling things in terms of where things are. So, if you take a look at your little Cartesian plane you can see it's divided into four quadrants. And the quadrants are numbered like this. One, two, and you can see that we're using Roman numerals. I always feel really fancy when I'm using Roman numerals. Three, and then four, which, of course, is when Star Wars episodes start, episode four. Interesting fact. So that's how it kind of goes. It goes counterclockwise, obviously, starting in the upper right-hand corner, and it kind of goes like this. One, two, three, and four. Now, how do you get something on the Cartesian plane? Well, what you end up getting is a coordinate. And we write coordinates in pairs. And the pair is the x value and the y value. And that makes up a coordinate. And that tells you where you move. So the x represents where you move on the x-axis. And let's just kind of put this in kid's term the left, right, and then the Y term, the Y, is kind of your up and down. Let's go see how that looks. So here we go, and you might want to draw a giant one if you're taking notes on this, a giant one, we're going to use this for quite a lot of things. Now you can see that I didn't draw things very straight, but bear with me here, okay? So we're making um, a, was that a three, four, five, six, a seven by seven grid right now. We're making a seven by seven. So we have lots of space that we can go and do things on. Okay. So I'm going to say, let's go and say I have a coordinate and it's two comma three. Two comma three. Where would that be? Well, don't forget the two represents the X <coughs> and the three represents the Y. So a few things to note is where do we always start? Where do we start? So we start always at the origin. Remember the origin was right in the middle? Yeah, you start there when you start counting. And you always start counting along the x-axis. So it says we're gonna move along the x-axis two spaces. So kind of one, two. Okay, and now we're gonna move up three spaces from here. One, two, three, and boom. That's where we are. And let's just call this something. I'm going to call this A. So that's where point A is. Let's say I wanted to know where, I don't know, how about negative 3, 1 is. Where's negative 3, 1? Again, remember this is the x and the y. We start at the origin. I'm going to go backwards three because it's negative. One, two, three. And I'm going to go up one. There we go. It's right there. And let's just say we're going to call that, I don't know, B. So there's point B. If I asked you what, what quadrant 
B is in. What quadrant is the B point in? You would say it's in quadrant. Did I just hear you say two? Absolutely, this is quadrant two. Good stuff. Now, we can also do the opposite. I can ask you, where is this point? Like, where is this point right here? Where is it? I'll call it C. So what does C equal? And we always put things in brackets, our coordinates. And again, we look at the x. Where in the x is it? Well, if I went over here, it's at negative 1. I went backwards 1. That's negative. And I also went down. 1, 2, 3, 4. I went down 4. So we say negative 1, negative 4. And oh, by the way, it's in quadrant 3. That's right, quadrant 3. Getting the idea? OK. Well, that's really neat when we can start using the idea of coordinates in Cartesian planes, moving around, positive and negative numbers. Now you might be wondering, like, why, why do I need to know this? What are we doing in real life? Well, for creating graphs. Let's think of a topic. A topic that we're all extremely interested in. Hmm. We'll make it circus-based because that's always going to be uh, fun. And here I'm going to give you some, some data. Okay, so here's some data. And we're going to say the data is going to be, so the x Here we go. I'm going to have, uh, what can we say? Circus-based data. Let's say, um, say hours of operation. So how many hours, hours of operation? So how many hours is the circus open? And the Y is going to be money earned. Money, spell that right. There we go. Money earned. Okay. So when the circus is opened zero hours, it makes zero dollars. Ooh. When it's been open for one hour, it makes twenty dollars. When it's been open for two hours, the circus makes thirty dollars. And when it's been open for three hours, whew, it makes a hundred dollars. And then four hours, it makes a hundred and ten. And then five hours, it makes a hundred and forty. Great. Okay. So how are we going to use that? Well, all of this data gives us ordered pairs. So these are all the ordered pairs. Now I've helped you out and I've told you what x and y is. So this ordered pair here would be 0, 0. This ordered pair here would be 1, 20. Uh, the next one would be 2, 30. And then it got crazy, right? After 3 hours, it made 100. What else do we have? We had 4 hours and it made 110. And then 5 hours, it made $140. So you have all these ordered pairs. Well, now you can go and actually graph this stuff whoop, on a Cartesian plane. Now, here's a fun thing. Which quadrant does all of this take place in? One, two, three, or four? It only takes place in quadrant one, doesn't it? So we're talking about positive things. So really, this stuff doesn't matter. So sometimes you'll just see the quadrant drawn. But I'm just kind of putting in context of an actual Cartesian plane. Don't forget, this is x and this is y. For the most part, the x-axis almost always, almost always, is always time. Okay, And the y represents, of course, money. Money. Now, as you're going and numbering this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I've made this kind of um, 6, 7. 
I made this pretty easy because they're nice and easy numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. When you go up like this, do they have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? That means I'd have to go 140 spaces up. Oh my gosh, that would be crazy. Well, I can make it a different scale. I can make it a different scale. So what scale do we want to use? I'm going to use going up by 20s. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, and 140. This is getting messy, isn't it? OK, let's go and plot these now. So 0, 0 obviously is right here, boom. And then I would have 1. After 1 hour, it's 20. After 2 hours, it's 30. It kind of squeezes in right there. And then 3 hours, it got to 30. That's pretty cool, right about there. Sorry, 4 hours, sorry, 110. So it's jumped way up there. Let's get rid of that one. And for 5 hours, it went to like way up here. Now you could connect these and make it a line like that. You'd use a ruler, of course, wouldn't you? And you can start to see things. Sometimes it's easier to see that. And if you were to look at this, what might you say? I mean, this is where the real life stuff is. If you are a, a circus investor, what might you say about this? Hmm. I would look for the steepest part. The steepest part has the biggest return of investment. So I'd be wondering, like, what happens between hour an hour two and hour three? Like, what happens here? You make a lot of money, don't you? You make a lot of money. Maybe that's when the lion show is. And that's when all the revenue is made. Hmm. If the lion show makes so much money, maybe we should have more lion shows. So you can start to use graphs to help you see some opportunities or to answer some questions. Graphs are extremely important. And you'll get more into graphs as you progress in your mathematical educational background. Now you can also use Cartesian planes. Let's get rid of that one. You can also use them for other kind of pieces of information. You can use them for, uh, you could use them for maps, like grid-based things. You can definitely do that. So you know, if you had like a, a map here and you had everything a little bit divided up, and you could start to kind of say where everything is. These are not very straight lines, are they? And typically, if you did that, you'd be like, this is the main axis. What's that axis called again? X, exactly, and there's Y. So, I mean, you could do like things like in this block, you know, in this block is the school. You know, so the corner of the school is at 1, 1. The corner of the school is at 1, 1. You know, you can, so you can start using Cartesian planes for this. That would be very important. Um, so lots of different kind of uses. So data charts and also um, just kind of maps in general. Hope you enjoyed this, and let the show continue. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to another edition of Math with Mr. Douglas. Hopefully, you learned a little bit more about the coordinate plane. Until next time, go and have some fun, and dare I say, clown around. See ya.